Yes, I am. Okay, good. Thank you. Starting on historic again. I'm back Still to 64. Okay. What kind of soup did you bring? There's vegan corn chowder and chicken vegetable. Both just nice. There, there for the taking. They're a little cooked down. Where's your soup, Mike? What one, Mike? I had dinner with you. I could take one home. Okay, a little appetizer, maybe. <coughs> okay, so what is the historic chapter 64? Okay, the first thing that I see is the definition of demolish. Um, Dave, you said you don't have a problem with it, but you have a problem with the specifics of regarding demolition in the chapter. So you the definition as it is is okay? Yeah, you just, need, you just need to add something in the chapter. Okay. So there's two things that, I, that I'll, just, I'll just throw out there and to consider and the special order, or maybe as we go along, or maybe now it's the place to add it. But one is uh, is the purview of the HDRB. And so I have the first, I don't think there's anything in there, or well, it's not, what I'd like to get in there is that they stay the hell out of buildings. Um, but so it's like the purview of the HDRB is limited to the exterior property or buildings, whatever the wording is. And we have now, I think, visible from public right away. And, uh, you know, we, we can use that. Um, or we could use streets, which is used in other. I'm just thinking, it's just like, it should be somewhere where this is there, it's explicit, unless it is somewhere in there. So if we're going along, we can keep going, and I won't, I don't want to okay, linger on that, but I think we can, I'd like to see that somewhere where it's. I think there are 20 places in the chapter where it says that they um, only look at exterior. So, for example, in. Um, Definitions um, as used in this B. What is it? Sorry. Usage and definitions mm -hmm. and in B. Um, number number one says exterior architectural features. Number two, alteration. It changes the exterior appearance. So. I'm oh, sorry. They so B one. Yeah, so it, ju just looking at where they t where the chapter identifies what the HDRB looks at, the, the word exterior or external is throughout the chapter. But is there anywhere it says where that's where they're limited to? I mean, yes, they're looking at this or the, you know, the exterior of this or the exterior of that, but is there anywhere where it says that their purview, is, they're limited to the exteriors of buildings in the historic district that can be seen from the public right away. There is no sentence that states it that way. So, do so you think, it, that's I think, the way they describe themselves, though. Yeah, that's the, that's way, the way they say it. It is, should is what be. They do. And I think that should be clear, like, the, at, the, at the get go. So, in 64 4, where it talks about the Architectural and Historic District Review Board, you could add something in there. The effect and purposes of okay. this chapter, the board created by, uh, or you could do it in public policy, which is in or both sixty four one. I, yeah, that's one. That's what I was looking one. to. It seems like it should be. It would be good to start the whole thing off with, mm -hmm. you know, okay. since the chapter is purpose, you know, it makes sense that. <coughs> so where would it go? Somewhere on? in there. Tell me if I'm flipping too fast. Mm. Okay. You know, in the last sentence of 64-1A, it says, um, accordingly, the mayor and board of trustees thereby created an architectural and historic and here Power to district and hereby established 
Architectural and Historic Review Board with power to review all changes. In it's the exterior. Yeah. It already yep. says in the exterior. Right. Oh, yeah, you're right. It's right there. Right there. It says okay, so that's, that's basically what we need. So it is there. That's what their power is to review changes in the exterior architectural features of improvements located in the district. So that's, that's what you're looking for. There. But it doesn't have the other part as viewed from the right of way or... or yeah. Well, that's, that basically um, I think goes on later on. Okay. Well, maybe it should say it. So you're talking the last sentence in, uh, in A. A. In A, yeah. But that once again does it says changes in the exterior, but it doesn't say anything about architectural improvements. Nothing. It, it doesn't say it's limited to that. Well, no, we can add the word with power to review all changes. Only to the only exterior. Or it's limited to. The exterior architectural, architectural. frame of improvements. Mm -hmm. Architectural features of improvements located within the district. Review all changes. And you could just add a clause at the end of that saying, and limited to features that are seen from the public right away. Does that have this bit? I mean, So, for example, the side of um, the silver spoon, mm -hmm. the siding that they made him change because it didn't match the front. Yeah, if you're walking down the street, you're you looking sort of, there, yeah, you, you can, can see. sort of see. Yeah, so you know. they made him change the piece of it. As soon as they took the buildings apart again, <coughs> you can totally see it. Okay, so we'll spread them. There's an alley there. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe he had also provided the uh, information about the siding on that side of the building. And what and then, was put yeah. up did not match yeah. what. Yeah. 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 Welcome, yeah. To Jimmy, were. welcome to Jimmy's world. He so took a shot. He ended up paying twice as much to do it. All right. So what do we want? I think somewhere in that last sentence is fine, but I think it should be limited to the exterior as That's seen right. from view. Yeah. Uh, right away. Public right away. All changes. Now, one of the things that they did, and when, with uh, you know, limited to view from the right away, was that Al said that the house down the Sutton, the, down the Campbell property, you could see that from the train tracks, and made them put fences and do this other work. You know, made them do some other work there because that was a public right of way. The train tracks. Well, and the parking lot. They had parking lot, and so. I guess that should be then defined. Okay, let's let's. So like, uh, so uh, Jeff was looking at one. He said like Terry Town said that it was from the streets. But I don't know if that's. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with whatever, but it seems like from the historic district. Maybe because <laughs> the rail, railroad tracks in the parking lot are not part of the historic district, so maybe something like that. So if you're in the historic district, right of way, maybe. That's good soup. I would put only instead of okay. specifically. Okay. Hmm? Which one did you get? The corn. Yes. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay. It's a little cooked down. It's been sitting in the heater all day. Well, thank you because I don't have a chance to eat it. Okay, I just typed something in so I don't want to take a look. Um, Going out the mayor and board of trustees thereby from a public. From a public. Now, Marie, that um, last it is part a defined of term. Not necessarily in this chapter, but it is a defined term. Um, but the thing is, uh, what I'm worried about is it's in before amended. It should be in because uh, the amended clause. You may, we made this change. The amended clause is going to have to change. Right. Don't worry about okay. it. Okay. Public and right of way or just right of way? From the public right of way. Lowercase public. Low, okay, that's what I'm wondering. Lowercase mm -hmm. R. Excuse me. Wow. Marie, you and I have to talk about e code because I, she sent me another, and I have to get clear what we want to do. So I believe she'll be doing some of this, but I want to make sure that I. She needs to lose a space before A. Oh, okay. <clears throat> it seems a little awkward to me the with power to review all changes only in the exterior architecture. No, I took out all. 
The power to review changes only in the exterior potential features of improvements. Wouldn't it be changes to the exterior? It could be. Instead of in. Yeah. Yeah, I thought I understand it. To the exterior architectural features. So that could mean anything from moldings to a porch or anything. Yeah. You got the desk, you got it. Yeah. Okay, so let me just. So how is it that they. Well, we'll get to the. The other parts. In terms of structural stuff and all that. I got another who's that. Yeah. Okay, so it's it's as is. I think I think right of way is not a defined term. Oh, okay. I thought you said. No, that I. Yeah, no. I'll take it out. Streets. Okay, so the power to review changes only to exterior architectural features and improvements located. So if it's to exterior features that are not seen from the public right away, then they don't have any say. That's yeah, correct. that's the way it is okay. now. Yeah. Perfect. That's correct. Okay, so that's so. But do we have to say within the historic district? No, I think it's, it's so, sorry, it is it, it says it, it does changes say only to exterior architectural features of improvements located within the district. Right, but viewed from? As seen from a public right-of-way. If someone is on the river, that's a public right-of-way. That's what I mean. They can see. It's the whole village. So, yeah. <coughs> so that's what happened with them so. down at the... Yeah. Okay. I mean, okay. I feel bad for those people. <coughs> well, they had to have known they were going to put a ton of money into that. And you always, know, sure when you, you always know when you're doing construction that it's going to be twice as much as you ever estimated it was. It's going to happen less. I, I, wish, I wish you were my customer. The second thing, <laughs> second thing is, a, is the demolition thing. I just think that there's somebody should add it, and I'll throw this out here, and again, wherever you think. Under no circumstance shall members of the HDRB evaluate interior characteristics or construction. All determinations regarding construction and or, and or demolition shall be the sole responsibility of village engineer or, or engineer hired by the village of Cold Spring. I like that. I like that. I just don't know where to put it. doesn't go with the definition of demolition, but no. it has to go someplace in, inside. Because um, the definition of demolition. Yeah, it's not, doesn't necessarily have to be that. I don't, demo, I don't want them inside buildings. No, no, no. I just want it in the inside. I need to move it. It's part of the. Uh, we need to find a place to put that. The hardship thing. It's going to even be no, other, it, than it's, it's other than hardship. It's other than hardship. The point that Dave is making is the Architectural Review Board, I believe. Hey, I'm sorry to bother you. Is there any uh, police here by any chance? I'm with the Minnesota State Patrol. <laughs> that? You're a far away from home. I know, man. Isn't that crazy? I got a parking ticket out here. I got a, I got a rental with a placard that says I'm, I'm a cop, but I think they might have missed it, unfortunately. I can come back during business hours, too. Oh, there's somebody on the road. I just don't know. Let me see. I think I, I have... No worries. I can just deal with it tomorrow, too, but I just thought I might... Are you in town tomorrow? tomorrow? If you want yes, ma'am. I'm till Saturday. Yes. yes. Okay. Stop by tomorrow. They okay. Care of Thank you. Saturday after meeting. Have a good night. No problem. Thank you. It said police parking, so he parked. <laughs> Seriously, sir. Makes sense. Yeah. What's that? He said, it said police parking, so he parked in the police parking to <laughs> get a ticket. Dits. Okay, Steve. That's a rental car that threw us off. Yeah, he had a plaque. I thought it was like a window. gangster. So yeah. under powers and duties, I think where you, it might no, be an appropriate know. place, <laughs> is to put it under powers and duties of the review board. Okay, that yeah. sounds great. Where Where's that? that? It's 645A, 64-5A, uh, uh, not 64-5, and then a. capital A. Gotcha. Okay. I'm there. Okay, I gotta get there. Okay, got it. Okay, general advisory powers of retaining professional, retaining employee professional. Maybe under three somewhere? I just had another whole point. Mm-hmm. Five, I, I would six, think, seven. Lynn, that it might better be under four, which is review proposed alterations. Oh, uh, yeah, that is better. Because three is more uh, research work. Mm -hmm. um, but oh, four, yeah, uh, four right. is um, the work that they um, that they that they that they do. Yeah. 
Okay, okay I'm you good want, with that. You want to read it out to me again slowly, Dave? I'm going to remember. Right. I don't type as fast as you can. change if you'd like. Um, <laughs> under no circumstance. Uh, give us your thoughts first. <laughs> I mean, under no circumstance. Under no circumstance shall members of the HDRB evaluate interior characteristics or construction. No, okay. no, 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 no. Go ahead. So, what? What so, do you want? Okay. So, review proposed alterations to designated properties. Review proposed alterations to designated properties from the exterior. Right. Right? From the exterior. There's a, alterations, alterations to the exterior. Reviews Only. proposed alterations to all designated right, exterior properties. exterior alterations. I like from, exterior alterations. It, I mean, they're all exterior alterations. That's the only thing they look at is exterior alterations. And the point is they should stay outside on the outside of the building. They shouldn't go inside right. the building. So review proposed alterations to designated properties um, uh, from an by external review or by um, by evaluating by performing exterior evaluations. No, that is meant. I think that the under no circumstances shall members, that is something you tell the members. Yeah, but you this is not something, I, I don't think that it is appropriate to have the under no circumstances in the code. Okay, um, I'm good but, with that. But well, your point is that they should stay on the outside of the building. Dave, read the rest of that again. And also that all determinations regarding construction and demolition shall be sole responsibility or the responsibility of the village engineer. That, and that's that's a, a very, I think it's a new but important yeah. Um, yeah. Just, uh, uh, okay. element Re review here. So review alterations proposed alterations to designated uh, properties. From, to designated properties review from, uh, from an... Or should we say an external review? Well, the problem is we've got external alterations, exter external review. Review proposed alterations to designated properties. Uh, okay, semicolon, it, yeah. as you have it here. If required, site visits are restrict, will be restricted to the sure. exterior of the building. That's if good. site visits are required? If, yes, if site visits are required, -E. they are restricted to the exterior of the building. I like that. That's good. Is that, does that work? Yeah, I think so. Okay. No. So what you said about their evaluations of structure and all that stuff, that needs to be in there too because... Yes. They will be. Yeah. They will be. Okay, because then another... So, so this is more as information, not just for the historic district review mm -hmm. board, but for people who are having their properties reviewed. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me, I stuck this in, but it's in a bad place, so it needs to be moved. Okay. Review proposed alterations to design designated properties, um, approve or, or deny certificates, blah, 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 and make determinations. Then, if site visits are required, should that be a last sentence? Uh, that could be. That could be. If site visits are required, they will be restricted. They will be restricted. If site visits are required. They will be restricted to the exterior of the building. Okay, and Dave, yeah. what you said. The next thing you said. Dave, I think you should use shall instead of will. Shall be. Shall be. Dave, back to um, about the engineers. Um, yeah, what I had is uh, all determinations regarding construction or demolition. Um, shall be the sole responsibility of the village engineer. So for there, look at 64-5, lowercase a, 2. Mm -hmm. Retain or employ professional consultants mm -hmm. yeah. or mm -hmm. other personnel as may be necessary to assist it in carrying out its duties, except that if a charge is to be incurred for such approval shall first be obtained from uh, the mayor and board of trustees. Retain or employ professional yes, consultants. consultants. And what you said, Dave, was that I think there were two points. One is the consultants are 
when a consultant is is re when a consultant's professional opinion is required, that consultant has to be hired by the village, mm -hmm. right? We, we we don't want my architect providing to the, a village board right. my architect's opinion. It is the village's architect's opinion that that influences the village, right? So that's one element. The second element is that that when a cons when there are matters about when there are questions about the structure of the building, mm -hmm. is it just limited to structure or is it more than structure? I'd say construction and demolition. I don't know structure. Well, I guess it would be. Structural evaluation. Yeah. Right. Okay. Structure. So. Yeah, that would right. cover. So, it. so, Frank, can you throw this in as a new yeah. sentence? Yeah. Structural evaluations um, shall be. Lynn, taking your structural evaluations shall be performed by a professional consultant hired by the village. That, that's what you wanted, Dave. Yeah, that sounds okay. good. Okay. Wait, I always suggest it shall because, <laughs> no, because shall it be, mandates. Shall be as good. That yeah. particular word, structural evaluation, shall, shall be performed by a professional consultant. Working on behalf of the village. Professional consultant. I said hired by the village or working on behalf of the village. This speaks to uh, also to them hitting their spending limit and being allowed to tear something down also because uh, you know the, the HCRB with the flower shop had determined that indeed the building was structurally yeah. unsound and, and, and it was okay to do it. The point that you're making <coughs> is that's not the HDRB's right. purview. There yes. may be a qualified structural engineer um, as a member of the HDRB, but it's the village of structural engineer okay. who should say that. So, so you got to say that the there's it can't be a member of their board either. It needs to be an independent or yes, but, uh, because they're not supposed to be in there doing it. Okay. So uh, P and C professional no, the uh, terms are before this. So professional should be capitalized. And okay. Consultant should um, be capitalized. Okay. Um, yeah, so Steve makes a point if one of their members happens to be a professional engineer. That's really um, nice, but they can't do okay, it. Okay, so we need to sort of an independent shall be performed working on behalf of the village, not, not on behalf member. of the of the HDRB, okay. or, or change it to say hired by the village or employed by the village. Okay. Now, what um, do you? I, go ahead, Mary. What do? You, what would you think about making? The last sentence here, another major bullet point. I think that's fine. Let me go back and ask something before we move. Um, okay. It says in this retainer employed professional consultants. Now we're talking about the, the role of the HDRB um, as necessary to assist in carrying out its duties, except that if a charge is to be incurred, approval shall first be obtained by the mayor. Now, isn't this in an escrow? Yes. Isn't this an escrow charge? Why do we have to approve something that goes that gets paid by the well, I, I would think it would behoove us. I've been wanting to use that word all <laughs> day. Jackpot, did you watch and Jack, was Jeopardy correct, tonight? So. <laughs> it, I think it, it is appropriate that the village board agrees that the, the expenditure of funds by the HGB or the ZBA or whomever is an appropriate expense. Not, not necessarily the amount, but do we need... The needed. Yes. Well, is it, is it, should that be between the board and the client? Well, the client's going to ultimately pay for this. Yes. Uh -huh. Well, they can do that too. So we still have to approve it? But they're paying for our engineer. Now. I, what's as interesting well is I don't know that we have ever, that any item has ever come before us asking right. the, and that's, the, yeah, that the was, village board to approve. Yeah, because I think usually it goes planning and the client, you know, we're, we're going to get an engineer that's coming out of their escrow account. Right. We don't usually get involved. I mean, we see the bills and we know where the, where the money's yeah, coming from. So we don't get, so can we take that out? Um, where is it again? Sorry. It's in 
uh, 645A A2, the, this paragraph we're just looking at. So all, all you would do is take out except that if a charge is to be incurred. Uh, yeah, so that much. The part that is uh, highlighted, if you guys can see that. Mm -hmm. Retainer employed professional consultants or other personnel as may be necessary to assist it in carrying out its duties. Period. Period. Then accept that if a charge is to be incurred, approval shall first be obtained. I don't know why we need that because it's it's coming out of the escrow account of the client. Yeah, we can take that out. Easy for that. Easy. Period. Okay. <coughs> All right. Okay, and then we say structural evaluation shall be performed by a professional consultant employed by the village. Okay. Um, Should that be a separate uh, item number? I'm looking at each of these each of these paragraphs are ending in semicolons and then this one's sort of at the end of a sentence so is it in the wrong place? Mm -hmm. Steve, is this bad for you? Uh, sorry. Can you say again? I'm oh, sorry. Uh, each of these <coughs> paragraphs, one, two, three, are all ending in semicolons and then this one is a sentence ending in a period so it seems like it sort of doesn't belong here. It's a semicolon. Yeah. It should be a semicolon? It should be a semicolon. Okay. That works for me. Yeah, thank you. So we don't need to re-mention that it is not the purview of the HRV right there. And no, I think we said so we we already said it once, but yeah. yeah. Um, Fran, what you want to do is you want to change the period at the end of the first sentence to a semicolon. At the end of the okay, so that becomes a semicolon. Yeah. So it's two semicolons in this. Because yeah. it performed only. And by structural the should be a lowercase then. Not sure. Yep. Should we put only by a professional? We performed. Yes, or only performed or only by. Structure. Either or lower. Shall only be performed by a professional or should we, no, only by I think is better. I, I, I think you got it with what you got there. You don't think an only goes in there? I, I think you're overdoing it, but if that's what you want to do. Well, it's clearer in terms of telling them they can't do it. But the, the purpose of the code is not to tell the HDRV what they can mm -hmm. and cannot do. The purpose of the well, code is if, if we believe that the HDRV has, has been doing things improperly, that is up to us to talk to them about it, not state it in the, in the code like this. Mm -hmm. We could take only out because it, it's structural. Any structural evaluation is going to be performed by a professional employed by the village. Period. That would exclude them. So. Well, some people that were reading that might think the HDRV is the village. You know, if yeah, you, were, that's if you didn't know any better. Because um, so. they're working, they're one of our. But only is not going to clean that up. No, definitely not. All right, so let's go up. Um, I'm going to go up and just get some of the comments. That's how nice and big my print is. That's the chair, it's not me, I swear. Mm, sure now. <laughs> the soup. Okay. Are we good? We're good with that? I think so, Steve. Okay. Your question is this for the sake of future needs. Okay. 64 3, Steve had a comment. Um, well, it's a comment on, the, I think, the Dave's. I mean, yeah, it is on what he's talking about. Okay. So is that good? Is that uh, okay. good to take it out? Or something? Well, what does it say? Uh, you were, when I check on this, it's changed and enlarged. The boundaries of the district. Oh, this is the change in the lodge. This, this, this is the they boundaries. Want to change it. Back to 64.3, the boundaries of the right. district may be changed or enlarged. Yeah, and that's the first comment, so now, right? We're cleaning yeah, up to that. We're cleaning okay. up to that. Mm -hmm. So, um, do we want to take I'm responding to someone else's comment, okay. though, on that. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Dave has one below. Mm -hmm. I'd like to, okay, this is Marie's comment. I'd like to discuss if the village feels the boundaries of the district should be enlarged. Okay, we started this discussion. Um, uh, I think taking out the word enlarged is going to help us a bit, but not necessarily fully because it also says it can be changed, which could mean anything, enlarged, sh shrunk, or whatever. Um, but doesn't it, uh, the rest of the document, doesn't or the rest of the chapter, doesn't it kind of re really restrict how you can do that to a point where... Yes, it's, I think it's called delineation. To expand the, the district boundaries, 
I think it's called delineation, mm -hmm. and, and it's I think toward the end of the chapter no. how that how that can be done. Now this is it, upon the recommendation of the board uh, review and or planning board and an amendment of this law by the mayor. So it's pretty much isn't going to let them just expand or enlarge on their own. It goes through all kinds of processes. Have to go through a public hearing. Yeah, have to go through. Well, we were discussing eliminating it. Can we just take out the words enlarge? Changed. Shall consist of the area designated on the map. Yeah, I don't know why it's enlarged there. How well the boundaries may be changed. How well somebody you can make yeah. it smaller. Maybe. Eliminate it. Um, should we take out enlarged? Yes, no, maybe. Fine, I'll see that. Uh, <laughs> so, are your feelings on that, Marie? Because you said you I, want to. I, I'm if you want to leave it as it is, that's fine with me. Okay. I'd like to take it out. I, I brought what? that up when we... Not enlarged, just the whole section. Oh, okay. Or the whole... Okay. Uh, it's probably I could go either way on okay. it. I, I think it should be some future use, but I guess at that point... Anybody somebody else? Can... Oh, I, I just think that section we should leave in. I commented, just leave it in. Enlarged, I don't care about. Changed could be bigger or smaller either way. So I think change co changed yes. covers it. Okay, there's a lot of comments down here. Someone on the historic home, I thought. Town boundary. Okay, right. So I think you can resolve all those. Okay. Let's yeah. Let's move on. Okay. All right, so we will resolve this. So we're leaving the word enlarged in or taking it out? Take it out. Take it out. Okay, delete or enlarge, that works. Okay, moving on. Uh, I added review board input. Now this had something to do with um, the definitions, Marie, and I, th I wasn't sure. Shall be noticed because I added in review board in parentheses and we're 64-4A um, because that's the way it's referred that's to. Fine. That's fine. Now mm -hmm. does, it go in, does it go in quotes inside the parentheses or not? Uh, there, I, I think what, the way you've got it is fine. It's fine. Okay. All right. Uh, individual members of the review board appointed by the mayor, blah, 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 members shall thereby appointed by the mayor with the approval of the board of trustees. Anybody, anybody not okay with that? That's good. We're in um, C. Okay. We are in 64.4, I believe it is, yep, 64.4E, the mayor and the approval of the Board of Trustees, with, with the approval of the Board of Trustees, so designate everybody okay with that? Mm -hmm. Okay, you, Dave, at the next part here, you were talking about um, where we just were, I guess. The possibility of the village board having the right to final determination on the demolition of a building. I don't remember why. I think it was said we have no right to stop a property owner from tearing something down if they have shown hardship. Uh, I'm not seeing. A I'm sorry, it's a, com it's a Steve comment, actually. I'm sorry. Uh, it should be, it's near 64, blah, blah, blah. 5A on the side, at least that's where it's popping up. It's not really connected to anything, but it should be the next well, comment in your list. Yeah, it has to do with the hardship rules. It's from Steve. It's, uh, it says 6.24 p.m. I'm responding to someone below. That it's, it's about the hardship. I don't know why it went there, but it's the most recent one. Okay, so we're talking about... As Dave yeah. says, unless... That's right below Dave's. <coughs> this is in response to what Dave said. <coughs> Unless I'm missing something, there's nothing in this section that indicates. Sorry, I just opened it up. Okay, Dave's comment from February 27th. Unless I'm missing it, there's nothing in the section that gave the HDRP purview. And then we next year, just to that. <coughs> also, I think something needs to be added stating whenever a demolition is requested, a licensed mm -hmm. architect or engineer representing the village. And not, uh, okay, are we okay with taking that out? Mm -hmm. um, where are we? Sorry, where are we? Thinking? So your comment about the um, 
purview of the HDRB and right. uh, whenever there's a oh, demolition. Yeah, they can resolve that. Okay, so they can resolve that when we took care of that. Right, right. so what I said was when, when we were, I thought we were talking there about, you know, who has the right to. No, I think that's down farther. It is, but I'm responding as far as to the hardship. It's Good. economic hardship. Yeah. Right. But when we were talking to them about tearing the building down, mm -hmm. you know, last, whatever it was, a year ago or more, uh, and we w we were talking to them about why they are allowed to, to give permission for this building to be torn down, and when we were talking about, well, why can't, why how, how come this can't go through the village board before we tear a building down or whatever, and they had said that, it's it's a New York State thing. It has really because nothing to do with them either. They're just kind of slowing the process down with because it's with in them. the historic district. It's a New York State requirement. Right. If someone wants to tear down a building that's not in the historic district, they file a building permit for demolition. No, no, I understand yep. how it works. Right. So, but because but if a building is in the historic district, then the HDRB is the review authority mm -hmm. to say yes or no you can tear down this building which has historic significance or contributes to the historic significance of this neighborhood. Right. Well which is what they did there but I knew for a fact there was nothing wrong with that building. It could easily have been fixed for way cheaper like they wrote than but it cost to do all that. Putting aside so, so what you need to do there is take a look at the procedure that is supposed to be followed when someone wants to tear down a building in an is, in the historic district. So, the, um, but they were saying at the time that they really have no control over it either. No, if this I, person shows a, you can end up in court or whatever over it, but if this person has shown that they tried to do everything and the the building still isn't to their liking or they have an engineer that says it's structurally unsound, they can tear it down and there's really not a lot to I don't think that if, about it. if the building is not to their liking, I don't think they can tear it down if it's in the historic district. Well, there was nothing wrong with the building and they didn't. Mm -hmm. So they could have added but, anything but, onto but, the back put, of it. Put to, put to one side what happened there <laughs> okay, and, well, and look at <laughs> what are the requirements okay. to, to receive a certificate of economic hardship. Yeah, yeah we do... Um, is that is a certificate of economic hardship is not the only reason why somebody tears down a building, right? Mm -hmm. Somebody no. could tear down a building because it's structurally Sunshine. unsound. Right. Okay, because so what? it's structurally unsound. As right. it turns out, there's nothing in our code about that. See, it, I mean, it should be, I think. I mean, economic right. hardship to me is this. Structurally unsound is this. Right. They may not, you know, it could be structurally unsound, or you could, you know, or it could be sort of structurally sound, but you don't have the money right, to fix it. So of it's, it's so it's to me, it's like not totally the same thing. Um, but Dave had a good point when he wrote it was that it costs a lot more to tear things down and rebuild something that's yeah. So I mean, that, five I don't think she larger. came in with an economic hardship <coughs> for that building. I mean, I don't mm. know. It was a structural I think it was thing. A, yeah. So it wasn't but, necessarily but it, an economic hardship. But it structurally, but that, it was okay. But the HDRB can only approve if it can be demonstrated that there is economic hardship. So if it's structurally right. unsound, who I think proves? they probably could if it was structurally, well, that probably would go to economic hardship because you'd yeah. have to fix it. And yeah, but not necessarily. You could be a billionaire. If you've got a building that's structurally unsound, you can take it down. But the, so it doesn't but the economic hardship is supposed to be based upon the value of the building. There are financial right. um, elements, mm -hmm. algorithms, that are supposed to be used to determine whether or not there is economic right, hardship. Right, that I understand. Okay. Which are really convoluted. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we went through and this when, when, they, when they talked to us. Right, well that's what I'm trying to get at is I think it's uh, at the time what they said was it's not really up, to, they are operating the ACRB on rules given to them by the state when with this economic hardship thing and they have right. the, the points they have to prove and then they're allowed to deem that this building indeed can be torn down, <coughs> yet they didn't even, that wasn't what they did there, it was a structural issue, so. And I think we've. And at the time I was like, well, who's the structural expert that determines right. this? Mm -hmm. And they said, well, they hired an engineer, and I said, well, I've been doing this for 25 years, and there's nothing wrong with that building, I could have fixed it for 
ten percent of what you spent <coughs> building this whole building. You know what I mean? So, like, I just happened to know better, and it happened anyway. So I'm I'm not trusting. Uh, I think we, what we're doing since here. we tightened up the engineer and the uh, you know and you know with demolition and having that. Right. That would be, but what they said was that wouldn't matter. So if we had our own engineer that said, yeah, well, actually, it's fine, and their engineer said it wasn't, then they move on to, they'll have to no. spend more money to do it, and then it's a financial hardship, then they tear it down. I don't understand. But exactly. I think we could argue that that's the, that economic hardship isn't true if you have an engineer that comes in there and says, Structural, structurally, this will cost you $10,000. Yeah. You know, that's not an economic hardship if you're going to tear it down and rebuild the whole building. All right. <coughs> but... My next point is every building on Main Street is like that. So every building in the historical district, you can find something that's structurally Probably. unsound about it, or, or they're definitely not built to any modern structural codes or right. anything. So everything's suspect. So structurally unsound. So they don't exist in the same realm that an engineer operates in nowadays because these buildings aren't built the way things are built now. They're not even close, but they're still fine because they're still standing. A lot of them are sagging or whatever, but so. Basically, everything is is open for demolition. Yeah, but I mean, if you get if you get an engineer who knows historic buildings, which is what we're going to need for something like this, it's not going to be just any engineer. It's going to be somebody who understands historic buildings, who's a certified engineer. <coughs> yep. And if they say this is what can be done to fix it, and the people don't want to do that, well, then they don't have to. Okay. Which is, is the but problem. the certificate of economic hardship <coughs> says, uh, in order to prove economic hardship. The applicant must demonstrate with objectively verifiable data for an income producing property, which is what that was, which is operated or, or offered in whole or in part for higher lease or rent, which is what that was, that the denial of a certificate of appropriateness will prevent the property owner from earning a reasonable return on investment, regardless of whether that return represents the most profitable return possible. So as long as it can be made net neutral, or positive, that that fits the bill. You don't get it. Um, what, what section are you in? Sixty-four dash seventeen. Certificate of Economic Hardship Process and Criteria for a residential property, which is not that. In addition to the above subsection A, in the case of a proposed demolition, removal, or relocation, the applicant must also establish that the property cannot continue to be used for its current function or be adapted for any other use, whether by the current owner or by a purchaser, which would result in a reasonable return <coughs> and reasonable efforts to find a purchaser interested in acquiring the property. Seriously? I'm sorry. My, my computer keeps jumping. I'm sorry, Marie. <laughs> <coughs> in deciding upon such application for removal, relocation, or demolition, the review board may consider whether the owner has created its own hardship through waste and neglect, thereby permitting the property to fall into a serious state of disrepair. One could argue that the previous owner had not been investing a reasonable amount of money in the maintenance of the property, and that when, when it was offered for sale, and we remember that it was on the market for a year and a half to two years. When it was on the market, there was one potential owner, one potential purchaser, and they offered a, an amount and they were turned down. It was less than the original asking price. And then a second purchaser came along and offered the same amount of money one and a half to two years later. That's my remembrance of the amount of time the offer was accepted. So now the new owner has this property and the new, new owner is saying that that the property cannot continue to be used for its for current function or be adapted for any other use. It could have been adapted for totally. another use. Yeah. So I think the question is how did the decision get made what were the objective numbers that were provided right. to the board to lead them or cause them to grant the certificate of economic hardship so is and permit the demolition? <coughs> so that's, they gave them demolition on economic hardship. 
I don't know. I'm guessing. Just, they, no, I'm just structural. thinking maybe guessing. maybe it wasn't an economic. Maybe it was just because somebody told them it was structurally insecure. Mm -hmm. They had to take it down. It may not. It may have had nothing to do with economic <coughs> crisis. Yeah, they were counting on that from the moment they came in. I, I, I believe that they. Well, let me see. Karen Parks came in and started reviewing future buildings that she was going to build there with us, and there wasn't even permission to tear it down yet. That is how it happened at the time. I remember she wasted like 45 minutes of our meeting one time showing mm -hmm. us, would you like this drawing better or that drawing? And, <laughs> and I said, well, nothing's approved. You can't even tear the building down yet. Why are we looking at this? Mm -hmm. and, uh, <coughs> and one of those drawings she showed us is what got built uh, later on. but. I don't think it was economic hardship for her. It was, yeah, it's just they said it's structurally mm -hmm. unsound, which, again, mm -hmm. is every building on Main Street. Yeah, I don't know. I think maybe the thing is the, <laughs> to, be, to address the board on that. And I, not, I, believe know, it, I believe it. Well, that was that. my suggestion. I'd like to get them in here and we could just talk about this mm -hmm. uh, in more detail. Because I don't remember. There was a reason. I made the same kind of points I was making just now. And she said, well, you can't do that because you can't tell somebody they can't tell them, but tear the building down. You can get in the way a little bit and make them have to jump through a few hoops about it. So but when it comes right down to it, uh, I don't think that's true. Uh, you can't stop somebody because they will eventually prove economic hardship, and that's a, the state is saying, well, then according to these criteria, you may now remove this building because you've proven it. And so then you, the only way to fight it at that point is actually to go to court. Uh, so it, it sounds to me as if uh, it would be to the benefit of us to have members of the HGRB explain or walk us through the process that they went through for 126 Main Street. Mm -hmm. Please know that'll go on forever. That'll go, that'll go on forever. Uh, <clears throat> you know, I mean, they, they sat before us when they, when they redo it, and then, blah, sorry. <coughs> it's been a long week already. <coughs> they sat before us when they redid this whole chapter. Uh, they sat before us when the, when we argued with <coughs> about the other building. Right. Um, you know, in my thinking, like rather than sort of determining it, as Marie said, you know, what happened before, we need to write this for the way it's going to be from now on. Well, you know, well this to, would to inform do that. that yeah. To do that, I think you need to understand yeah. how it failed. Yeah. Yeah. If, well, if well, this I'm, failed, mm -hmm. yeah. how did it fail? What I'm looking at is if, for if what Steve's saying is that they said this is the state law. They know where that they reference anything in New York State law. I'm looking through this whole 17 about right. economic. There's no reference to anything uh, in New York State law. So if this is, if the economic hardship is based on something that they said the criteria There is the some state, criteria, yeah. They, why, they didn't reference it. I don't think they don't made it, it up. There is criteria. 64 <laughs> 17 is the criteria. Right, but I, don't, but I, they told, according to what Steve remembers, that the criteria they wrote here is based on something from New York State. Right, and the and board okay. has no, but the village they, board has the, um, no recompense. Or it sorry. could be the New York State Office of Parks Recreation and uh, whatever, wh which is where the historic people go. But they didn't reference anything about New York State saying this is, you know, based on okay. such and such. So how do you want to go forward on this? Uh, I'm going to leave it open. Do we want to, want to hold this aside? Um, do we want to bother? Well, well, I if, do. We do. If need you're to uncomfortable. Like it. Well, it didn't turn out the way it seems that it, the I whole idea of protecting something failed. So if we want to protect things, then we should look into it. If not, then uh, people I will spend enough money to get permission to tear a building down. I think Marie's <laughs> suggestion might be a good one. I think we should, like, you know, have somebody come in, a rep from them, and just say, how did that happen? Mm -hmm. um, because I think they might have agreed to Is agree with mean, the decision they, they made. It. it might not have been, oh, our backs are going to say, well, we can't do anything. Yeah. We agree with you. There should be a file someplace here. Let me see if I can on. find the uh, the meeting G where the HGRB right. reached their decision uh, on that and send the meeting minutes. <coughs> and and they, they're, um, Jeff could probably pull the HGRB file for that particular address. If it's not uh, here, it will be downstairs, or it's already been scanned, in which case he can pull up the scan copy. Okay. Um, like the thing that happened down in Market Street, though, is that's why I wanted an engineer in there, because their engineer made the determination and they would let them go ahead with it. You know, the, the, you know, the, not, yeah, not the main good. building, but when they, when they were working, and then they came about this piece of it that they thought needed to be, which was the whole front foundation, I think, needed, and it was above ground. 
needed to be, uh, they, they determined it needed to be taken down but and that one, did it. That <laughs> one, I, I mean, on that one, as I remember, and correct me if I'm wrong, it was a 26-page plan, and there was less than a paragraph in the 26-page yeah. plan that talked about if they found this right, situation to exist, then they were going to <coughs> demolish. Right. Now, I, I say it is humanly impossible for an individual to read through a 26-page plan for a building such as that and every other building that has similar voluminous plans to look for that phrase and call it out and say, oh, wait a minute, you have to indicate in your building permit up front that you planned, potentially plan to demolish. Yeah, that, I think, is what's needed, is right. in the building permit, up front, there's a checkbox that says, demolish, maybe, <laughs> but call it out. Yeah, because that's what the great missed that, right? It was a great, or Bill, I forget who it was at the time. It, but they did it miss missed. the one thing. But, you know, I mean, I tw 26 that. pages for one building, mm -hmm. and they were doing yeah. changes to multiple buildings And they were, and they were changing the plans every other... Yeah. Yeah, they did a lot of stuff in motion. There should be, a, I don't know, I mean, there should be something in here that says any demolition that wasn't called out in the uh, building permit has to be approved by the. Yeah, by so, yeah something to that effect. Now, building. does that come right. under HDRB or does all that come under planning? What's that? Demolitions all come under HDRB? No. 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 <laughs> well, well, should, well, that one, because that's in an in historic district, yeah, right. come under HDRB. So, demolitions and planning would be the same. <clears throat> I mean, this chapter, even though we did sort of review it, what, two years ago? It's it's just sort of seems like it needs a lot more. Okay, what's, what's that? What's no, this chapter seems like, even though we did look at it two years ago, it needs more <laughs> looking at I mean, I, 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 I challenge this group mm -hmm. to identify what more it needs. I mean, I, I'll be honest with you, I haven't spent as much time on this chapter as I need to. Oh, and I do need to look. Go at stand you. in the corner. Go sit in the I corner. Will. Time out. Time out today. <clears throat> All right. So let we'll work on that the demolition thing and see if we can understand better how that happened or how to prevent it or what you. But I mean, they should have been. They they wrote this. They should have been. We don't want that to happen either. Yeah. And it should have been in here. And it doesn't seem like. Well, that's what they were saying. And at the time, I was annoyed or whatever. But I. I was talking to them about it, and they were able to convince me that there really isn't any, they're doing the most they could do. Right. There really were no more avenues to explore, and there was nothing the actual village board could do about any of it yeah. because we don't have the power to tell somebody they, what they can and can't do with their property. So, so I that, think we uh, definitely do. If that's the case. <laughs> that way, something along those lines though, Dave, like it was, you yeah. know, But if that's a couple the years case, ago. why do we have 64-17 it says know, you're, yeah. I, I'm, I'm well not that was my point at the I'm meeting I'm not arguing with no, you no no at the meeting I'm like well yeah. why are we doing any of this so, I mean this could have you're tearing down something that was fine this could have turned out really very bad if they had gone into that building and made a determination that the that the owner did not like the owner could have sued them and said you're not authorized to do this how dare you say oh, I can't tear it down yeah, you yeah. know because they weren't authorized to do what they did so <coughs> it could have put us in jeopardy of being sued if it had not turned out the way the buyer at the time or the owner at the time right. wanted it to be. So it just sort of, you know, and, you they know, overstepped their bounds and I think we're, we've cleaned a lot of that up. Yeah, that can't happen again yeah. with well, your little hard hats on. Well. I mean, I guess they well. could be invited in to look at well. a building, right? <laughs> well. I mean, I, mean th I, I have to say that for many people, it, they are very curious as to what the interior of the buildings look like. Yeah. And so there's a, I'm sure there was an element of curiosity mm -hmm on the part of the HDRV to see what architectural, interior architectural elements might exist. Well, well, it was flowers. But seeing it and, and, make, and opening your mouth are two totally different but, things. Yes. I mean, that was oh, the first, yes, the yes. Was the yes. first floor. Yes. It wasn't in With the basement. With a hard hat and a miner's light on it, <laughs> climbing through the okay. crawl so, space. So there. what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the files and see if I can find the HDRV minutes and materials <coughs> that led to the decision on 126 Main Street. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. The second thing is relative to the Krupp property with the um, back building mm -hmm. is re-looking at, um, uh, at the building permit mm -hmm. to see whether or not it has a demolition field. Okay. 
Yeah, I think, yeah, if it was on there and it said, you know, you have to stop work before moving ahead with any demolition now, that's not approved. Yeah, now. Substantial. So let me, let me challenge that. Let me come at it from a different point of view. So, um, Bar Civic's house was demolished. Yes. Right. I'm assuming Richard, this is Richard Che's. Um, that is the work district over there? No, it is not. Okay. And we intend to, so it is not the historic district. Right. That that house was demolished, and then the garage was demolished. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing that Richard um, filed a building permit to demolish both. Mm -hmm. it, it just gets approved. There was no there was no need for it to go to the HDRB, right. but there was no. It doesn't come to the village board. The right. village board has no okay. say on it. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me contrast that with Stanley White's house on uh, Hamilton mm -hmm. that has been demolished. That was an architectural gem. Mm, no doubt. But it's in gone. its day. In its day, no, yes. That's, which house? That's not the one that was all caved in. Yeah, the roof yeah. caved in, yeah. Yeah, that's that one. So now it's a really nice lot. lot. I'm, I bet you $10 that in the spring they're going to come with a subdivision request. That mm. lot is 150 by 150. Yeah. Is it really? So mm -hmm. they can easily put Steep. in two houses. Yeah. I mean, it looked from the outside like, you know, if I, if I walked by it, which I did on a number of occasions, I'm like, that place just needs to be ripped out and torn down. Yeah, it was so overgrown, too. It was gorgeous. Yeah, I mean, if you, if you yeah, it was down, a really neat house. Beautiful. Yeah. Now, Stanley Way is the architect who developed White Hill Place, hence really White Hill. Really shame on him. <laughs> uh, yeah. I always wanted to become a rich man and take a wrecking ball to the house I grew up in. <laughs> But so, so there's no, there's so no, there, so that's though, huh? out of the historic okay. district, people oh. can just take down a house for the Well, I, my point was, there were, the, I've just given you three demolitions in the village in the last um, couple of years, and not one of them came to the village board. Yeah. But they, they're not deemed significant. No. They, well, one, that's that's the one could, if we're just talking one about could historic argue, things. One yeah. could argue that Stanley White's house was significant. Uh, it was architect. Architecturally, it was yeah. a beautiful house, mm -hmm. and it was his house, so it was a house of significance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it was his yeah. house. how would we have been able to then have any authority? Been put like into the district. There, sh there should have been. <laughs> a, well, it oh, wasn't yeah, right. not not in my neighborhood. <laughs> um, but but you can do you can yeah, uh, identify yeah. a certain building, and you don't have yes. to have the whole area. But so. who would have who yes. would have made that determination? Yes. Not the owner who lived there, who let the place rot. And not the guy who was buying it who wanted to rip it they down. It is it a village call to say this is a historic building? Well, it's a we historic district review could like look at buildings and, right. and suggest. You know. According to this, they can. Right. That's part of the uh, yes. <coughs> expanding or, or uh, but changing, not expanding. My point is that three buildings were demolished and none of them came before the village board. Right. And one of them was in the historic district and did go in front no. of the HDRB. No. None I'm of sorry. The You're missing the, the other three. I, they, yeah. they were all outside of the HDRB. Yeah, well, then that's that's nothing we need to worry about. And that's, you know, and, and within the now. purview of, of the HDRB, they should be sort of, you know, they're aware of everything else that goes on around here sometimes, but they missed a building that was, was really historic. I mean, I didn't realize how historic that building was. If it was built by the architect who built the whole street and named the street and stuff like that, I mean, there is, you know, there is history to that building. So they should have nice. tagged it before, I guess probably before the guy sold it, because when somebody buys it, he would have been like not happy. Actually, he didn't. It was, I was believe it was foreclosed. It was foreclosed. It was foreclosed, and it was for sale as is. Right, and it uh, was a sealed bid. It was still Best. mold. Yeah, the, the basement had well, several yeah, feet of water died, in it. She died from it. Right, so that was their hardship on that <laughs> one. Yeah. But there, there was a, there was young a, wasn't there somebody living in there still? Yeah, Andrew. Okay, Andrew. let's Andrew. move on. Okay, <laughs> uh, going back on this. Big skylight. I thought that was in debate. Okay. <laughs> going back on this chapter, there's a whole bunch of things that just need to be approved, I guess. Um, some of them were the dates. Well, the next um, thing was Lynn's thing. Should be sitting ready to be approved tonight. Nice. Where, where, which, where is Lynn's thing? Where are we? Lind was on number four under 64-5A number... How did I miss it? There it is. Four. 64. 64-5 oh. little a, then under big A oh, number okay. four. Okay. This is number yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, somehow or other. 
64.5. I'm not finding where. There you go. I think this this comment wound up moving to something. You know what? Else. When you guys make comments, you have to sort of highlight something in the text. Oh, I oh here it is. Attach. I did I did see that S is highlighted under 64. Yeah, if you click on her thing, then something will come up, and it does a little. Yeah, line it's on it's that. under number four. Review proposed alterations to designated properties, approve or deny certificates pursuant to sections, blah, blah, um, blah. That, that's good, Lynn. Uh, review, or pro review proposed alterations to designated properties. There's a, a punctuation mark yeah. missing there. Yeah, I, I would suggest a comma there. But yeah. also my question was, should we, <clears throat> it just says approve or deny certificates pursuant to sections. Should we specify what certificates they are allowed to approve or deny in that section? I guess section 6410 and 6417 do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think you answered your own question. I did. Yeah. You just but to I, I also had more. some, yeah, um, punctuation. Okay. So right. just put a comma after properties, I guess. Yeah. You and they will not let you comma. There we go. Okay, so um, your, okay, so we're good. Now the, the previous comment was Steve's. I'm going to leave that in for a while. Yeah. Okay, because we have another. Okay, so let's see what else on. Next down below from the computer next month again. And we start getting into a bunch of craziness. Or no. Yeah, it, you know what? Because it was um, there were adjustments that didn't have years and dates in them. Okay, and so under sixty four eleven, right? I wasn't sure. <coughs> back up here. Four eleven D. I'm sorry. Where are we? Sixty four eleven D. I think you're the first next comment. Sixty four eleven. I don't see that. Sixty four eleven. And your comment was just x replace xx with 10, replace oh. 5 with 22. 64, 11. D is in dog? Yep. Okay. 64, 11. I didn't see Page that one. I think it's, I think it's uh, actually connected is it to. It's under uh, signage, 6411. 6411 D is in public notice requirements requested certificates. Yep. Okay. <coughs> I, I don't see any comment there. I don't see. I see the comment I see is next to 6413. Amended. You're saying it, uh, replace XX with 10, Dave? 6413. Uh, what happened to mine? I just jumped. Okay. Oh, that looks really weird. I just, uh, they just vanished. As it turns it. out, whenever anybody scrolls up or down, my screen goes with you. Yeah, I know. Right? And, that and is, that's what we're driving That is tonight. really annoying. Surprising. Oh. The uh, comments are, are gone now. Okay, Marie, I'm just approving the years and the dates. No, you? do not. No. Okay. S 64. I'm sorry. Fran, don't do that. That's the damn thing, Fran. What's wrong with you? So, so are we on 13? We're on 13, yeah. 64, okay. 13. Okay, amended by um, 64, 13. 13 fees, and it said it's amended by blah, blah, blah. 64, 13. Okay, fees. So you should have amended associated with it if that entire section was amended on that date. Right. I don't believe that entire section was amended on that date. I believe that there was an amendment, sorry, A was amended on November 13th, 2007. B, sorry, the convention right. mm -hmm. is when there is a section title, mm -hmm. You put amended there if you've changed the whole section. Right. Mm -hmm. If Understand. you've changed a subsection, mm -hmm. you only put amended associating associated right. with the subsection which, that was which amended. Which we did on B. It was sort of added to the bottom. Uh, so so what I may do is um, <coughs> just for the sake of, of getting the X's and the Y's out of there. Uh, Approve that and then just highlight that and say check it, uh, if that's okay. The one at the top here, Murray? I don't think there should be any amended at the top. I, I, that, oh, sorry, let me, I can quickly confirm. <coughs> uh, let me go to two, phase. Chapter 
Pictures. All right, so I'm going to leave that one as is, and for the time being, we'll move on. Um, I think we can remove that one at the discretion. Actually, if we go e code, they were going, they're going to do a lot of this. You know, go back to so, sorry, that thing was really not clear. What okay, she that's said. yeah, and then um, I, because I've had a few discussions with her, I sort of understood a bit, but it, it needs more clarification because uh, they do go back to the state law. And every time you you every time you have filed something, they'll yes. update there, which, which is going to be a significant amount of work. But they but they, <coughs> they justify when they finish that everything is exactly correct. For the price that we're paying them, I don't think so. I mean, they're saying that they they're going to baseline the code in two thousand no in nineteen ninety seven something and then. They're not going to. I mean, they're going to look at that, and then they're going to look at everything we're sending them, and then connect to. Okay. okay. But no, well, they're, 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 what they're saying is they're going to go to every single local law mm -hmm. that the village files it's with filed. the Department mm -hmm. of State from 1997, mm -hmm. and, and, and here's hoping the that the village clerks did in fact file. I would venture to say, if it's written in our code, that because uh, I, I know Mary was very very. You know, in line with this, uh, and I'm pretty sure Jeff is, but I don't know. So we'll, so we will, we will discuss later. Anyway, um, so that amendments for the time being, uh, I'll leave it until we until we clear up whether or not it belongs there. Uh, I'm sorry, and we enter the what? I'm going to leave it until you determine whether or not we should take it out of that top because you weren't sure, right? For 6413, the amended paragraph. Or do you want me to just take that out of there? How do you, what does it say now? It says amended 10-22-19, L local law 2019 Okay, um, leave it, leave it as leave it is. A it's, I don't, okay. I don't agree with it. Okay, <coughs> so there's a question. Um, next thing we are at, got that, got that, um, 6413B. I understand what you're saying. So that's that. I'm letting scroll to the end. 6413. Okay, 6413B. We're deleting at the discretion of the review board. Uh, consultants' fees. 64. I'm sorry, Fiona. I'm trying to get that. Just I had it, and somebody, I know, and it somebody moved the cursor. Not me. I would never do that, Mary. <coughs> sorry. B. Consultants' fees at the discretion of the review board. Applicants. I, I, I'm sorry, I'm still not there. 6413. 6413B. Consultants. So we're deleting at the discretion of the review board in the first sentence in B. Why? I don't know. You said you said replace it with the words with the letter A. Consultants' fees. That's your comment, Marie, from January. It says that delete replace at the discretion of the review board with A. So consultants' fees. It should say applicants for certificate of appropriateness. Blah, 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 show. Reimburse the village for all costs and expenses incurred for reviewing their applications, including the cost. Sixty-four thirteen B. It has consultant fees and then crossed out for your application. Yes, right. yes, yes. Yeah, and that makes sense because we're not. It's not at the discretion of the review board that they're going to they're going to reimburse us. They have to reimburse us. So I'm fine with taking that out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's a matter of choice. And then A should definitely be there. Yeah. Well, and then add, um, as Dave says, in any and all professional consultants included but not limited to plans, engineers, architects, and attorneys. Um, I think Marie wanted to add preservation consultants. Oh, okay, let me just see something. It, it's the only chapter and the only place where we would have a pr preservation consultant. Preservation. It says okay. not limited to in professional consultants. I'm fine with putting it in there. Any and all professional Please consultants, cover. including but not limited to planners, engineers, architects, uh, preservation consultants, yeah. and attorneys. Okay. You could say preservationists. Yeah, under, 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 preservationists. 
Oh, presentation consultants is fine. Thank you, Frank. Preservation consultants has a bit of a more professional mm -hmm. sound than just okay. preservation. So that's resolved. Could be. That's added. Next. Add or other professionals. <coughs> Do we want to add or out. other? No. You can take or others out of there. Take it out. Okay, delete. Preservation and uh, planning consultants. And why are we? What are we deleting here? What's that? Your comments. Or other. Here it says. Because we already things. said, not limited to, so you can get rid of or other. But this. I saw what it's saying. You just do something to the side. It's added. Done. Uh, replace our other percent. Okay. Are we still okay? I think after attorney should be a comrade or and or some whatever consult the attorneys pursuant to pursuant, yes. Or mm -hmm. take a the maybe it needs nothing to pursuant <coughs> to Comma. Comma. Preservation consultants and attorneys comma. comma. Pursuant to chapter fifty seven. And then there should be a closing parentheses after expenses. Okay. And the space between the comma and pursuant. Gotcha. Okay, we did that. <coughs> Replace. Okay. Um, leave that. Leave that as a leave, question. Leave Please the amendment. Check that. Okay. Um, that's not that. That's not that. Okay, this is the Z's and the X's and the Y's. So then the whole next one's just because of the fee schedule thing, right? Is that yes. some fun? So we can take all of that out? Yes, it's been deleted. It should have been deleted. Delete the funds paid. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so all of this comes out. It comes out, the applicant shall replace the funds. That's all, that's all in Chapter 57, right? Mm -hmm. Changes made by such consultants. What? Am I going too fast? What are you? You deleted one, two, three, four, five, six. Those are the paragraphs you said to take out because of chapter. They're all due to escrow. It's escrow. It has to do with escrow and paying how you do it. Yeah, I'm, I'm just why is there parentheses? One parentheses. Because I can take those out. That's because we delete. Had, that's what's left over. Yeah, that's because we had. I'll take them out in a second. They were like uh, this. This you know, headings of all of this junk. Uh, Okay, so now we're going to delete the applicant's show upon. Okay, that's all. Okay, so this stuff will come out. Come on, don't do that to me. Like little hammers. Right. Mm -hmm. One more. Um, which we're going to hold for a while. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Bless you. Bless you. I'm sorry, that was my coronavirus thing. Oh, that, that's okay. Did as you have a shot not, within the last 10 years? It's not that it's good. Strep we're okay. We're okay. No strep tonight. No, no, I go wash your hands, uh, everybody, no, quick. I've been on antibiotics <laughs> for more than two days, so I'm not contagious. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, That's in the doctor's office. We're all, we're all being re reviewed here. Okay. Um, Steve has a comment here. I guess it belongs to this, right? This is escrowed, I assume. I'm, I, I'm not seeing the comment. So we are down to. Number eight. Um, I don't know what section I'm at. Uh, it would be 17. D8. On, yeah, 64, 17, D8. D or B? D. D as in dog. Doggy. Okay. Let's not get into dog. <laughs> D8. Okay. Uh, Steve, it your comments, malicious. unless you highlight something in here and then make, and then, like, if you highlight and, uh, and then click on this little thing, then your comments will connect back. 
Well, my comment is on this. Okay. Day so then, then at that point you could just hit this, and it will give you a line to. Right. And you can reply to him right here, so you don't have to. Okay. So now we're at the point where Dave says. So what was the uh, with, with Steve? I was just saying should this escrowed by the. Yeah. Is what you want to do escrowed by already? Yeah. Or okay. Should this should be the village's engineer, a licensed engineer, or architect hired by the village? This is your comment, Dave. Mm -hmm. Go back to where we are. So your comment is on D eight uh, listing of subject property, Bryson. This is part of also economic hardship, I would assume. Yeah. Right? So we want to hold this whole section. Yeah. Pass it. Okay, we're gonna pass it. I don't understand what escrow means relative to determining whether or not there's economic hardship. No, the the Dave wants to hire the engineer and all that. I was just wondering is that something that the we would be in their escrow so that Oh yes. oh oh so yes. That we're, yes. Okay. Does it have to be said yes. there or it doesn't even have to be said anymore? Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be said here. It, yeah. It, but it, yes, it would it would fall into that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so these are the next couple of comments, Ed, uh, representing the village of Cold Spring for the licensed engineer. Do you want to leave that at um, take that now or just hold this whole section? I think we can change that. We can take that. It's in number 10. It will be D10. Report from licensed engineer or architect representing the village of Cold Spring with experience in rehabilitation. Okay, so we took that one. Okay, so after the architect, yeah, you're going to give you us space. Yeah. Okay. Okay. With experience in rehabilitation, comma. someone that's a question estimated market value of the property do we hire someone to do that? I don't know where you get a good estimated market value of the property. see if that was in there if that was in there before then that I doubt that ever happened I, I, I can tell you you go to um, a, a, a firm that is that is skilled in doing that uh, we have paid um, money for commercial um, assessments mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you, you do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what you, you have to do. Okay. So that's where we are at this point. Of, that's sort of the end of this chapter until we go back and do all of it. So did you get, take out the uh, Steve's as a result, too? And right? the escrow. Escrow had escrow to do with, with your comment. No, but it was answered. No, okay. then we're good. Okay. All right, so I'll take that off. Any services they, we need, they pay. Right. We need, they pay. I like that. We'll that should that be our that. model. We need yep. it. <laughs> Works for us. Thank you in advance. Mm -hmm. And then report from license engineer. That can be that's resolved. I think right. Uh, your question on that this should be the village's engineer or licensed engineer architect hired by the village. Okay, you said representing the village of Cold Spring. That's good. Does the village hire someone to do the evaluation? Um, estimated. Okay, so do we want to add number twelve? Estimated market value of the property, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. How do we want to word that? I'm sorry, what are we looking for? Uh, we number have 12. 12. It just says estimated market value. It doesn't okay. say. So do we want to say... Um, of property. My question was, do we hire someone to do the evaluation? Or oh, yeah. What's, yeah. Who, who comes so up with the estimate? Well, could that be provided by the realtor or whatever, too? No, not by the realtor who's marketing it. No. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, would, you would go to a prof yeah. professional Third evaluator. Party. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of a condition. Conducted by or yeah. I don't know what the word is. Determined by. Um, Determined. Independent. Determined by an independent real estate assessor. Assessor. Yeah. Well, not independent because they're going to be working for us. That, yeah, that, that could be someone they use. Yeah. Right. By. Okay. Determined by neutral. No. 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 I'll just. It has to be a. Uh, an assessor hired by the village. Yes. Representing the village of Coastman, which is the wording in the previous section, yeah. mm -hmm. or change them both to be hired by the village of Coastman. Right, it's right. spelling it right, even helps. Well, don't worry, they'll fix that. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, it's a small spelling mistake there. Assessor? Representing. 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 For representing. Yeah, for representing. Yeah. Representing. Yeah. 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 Who are you representing? Yeah. Misspell assessor. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, have a couple of S's. No, it's representing. Oh, you. <laughs> you, you no, it's representing. You've got <laughs> seven or eight S's Repre in assessor. <laughs> <laughs> and you really, you have all bases covered <laughs> free. Sorry. Yeah, one of, one of the above. My fingers are right out of space here. Okay. <laughs> okay. Good. Got it. Good. Got it. Okay, it is 851. Yeah. What else have we got here? So on this chapter, we need to just go back I need there. to get some okay. answers. Okay. okay. So. <clears throat> so next, when are we meeting next? Never? Uh, um, not uh, three leaving, weeks. Two weeks from tonight. Two weeks from tonight? Mm -hmm. um, right, okay, so the 25th. We are... The 18th. Two weeks to the... The 18th, no, not the 18th. Three weeks from tonight. We, we pushed it because I'm going to be away. Dave's going to be away. Right. So oh, we pushed it to okay. the 25th. Mm -hmm. So it'll be the 25th. Then we're going to maybe review 64 again. Finish this up. Review 114 again if we can get the swimming pool railing thing. Right, yeah, I put a note so, to myself. I, um, I, I dropped the ball on that one. So 71 licensing. We had started on that so we could finish that. Uh, and then we go to, we've got 93, 97, 104, 106. Um, I have a, just a question for us to think about for a future time. Um, the VNT chapter, which I think is 124, Marie? Um, uh, I'd have to look. Okay, uh, anyway, the vehicles and traffic. A couple of questions that are sort of no-brainers, but we should think about it. There are no, there are limited no-parking signs all over the village. Four hours, five hours, all kinds of different hours. So on Main Street it's four hours, I think it's nine to five. On the side streets, some, some of them say five hours, nine to five, some of them say five hours, four to five, some of them say four hours, four to, uh, not four to five, eight to five. So nine to five on some streets, eight to five on some streets, five hours, some of them are four hours, nine to some five. Some of them are two hours. Some of them are two hours. Do we want to be consistent? I mean, other than Main Street. Consistency is a, is a mark of a small mind. I know. <laughs> is that a what? It's the mark of a small mind. I'm, trying to <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> I know. What can I tell you? Um, so that's something to I was say taking that as a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm I, not consistent at all. I, I think that the, the whole, it, I mean, this is a digression, but parking, this is all related to parking. And yeah. are we going to do anything about parking? Um, I mean that that whole chapter has a lot of stuff in it, and we have no, just, up. just I, I'm on, on yeah. the topic. Are we going to do anything about I mean, parking? There's not much we can do. We have we have the ability to do permit parking, but yes. we can't do it because we don't have the space, right? Well, so all of that nonsense. We, we haven't gone through and well, the committee failed. Pardon me. The committee failed, right? I mean, they had a parking. Uh, I wouldn't say that. They were destined. The <laughs> it's a big problem. The we. I don't think we ever demonstrated that there are insufficient parking spaces on the streets in District Number Two. Let me call it to accommodate the number of people who have residences in District Number Two. Mm. So if we're not going to do that if we're not going to do residential parking in district number two, that raises the question, should we do parking meters on Main Street? Now we're getting I two think it's there. cost prohibitive. The, the, the amount of money it would cost and the amount of, of car well, spaces that each each uh, meter would control. Not if you, if you use a, like you see in the city, the pay station. Yeah. Put a pay station on, you put yeah. your license plate number yeah. you put the yeah, thing on your window. That's what we would do, but you need, you need you multiple need one pay every stations. Block. Well, yeah. I'm little, we need four. Oh, no. You, you, you need, need like like about eight to ten. Eight, yeah. yeah on expensive. Main Street. Yeah. And the parking meter, the one that we bought, cost us $10,000. Oh. 
And so that would cost us about $100,000. And if you had one, say, which was between Fair Street and Garden Street, you, had to have, you have to have it somewhere where people aren't going to walk two blocks. Right, so right. if you have one there, how many parking spots are there from there? Mm -hmm. yeah. Six? I mean, I, you know, I think... They never I think for eight, eight, and then what happens yeah. when residents park in this I mean, then, you know, my it's thinking, the, I know uh, we're, we're writing code at this point, and it's not going to be set in stone, but why don't we just clean up the code that we have and think parking meters... If we get elected again, you know, <laughs> next time around or maybe next year. But I mean, the, it, well, you're, right. the, the question is, are we going to invest money in changing the signs that we currently have so that they are consistent, which is the mark of a small mind. Right, yes, I understand that. And I to be consistent, it. or should we just say, the heck with it, why do we have parking signs on side streets because it's not enforced, and just the heck with parking signs on side streets and look instead at should we put meters on Main Street from I mean the red in the light summer to would be enforced from the Nickel. red light to the rain track. I mean we or we could just determine that we don't have parking limits on the side streets. I mean people who live there not I, I live on high street so it's not an issue for me. But people who live on some of these small streets who now are arguing that the commuters are parking on the street Oh, so hell would break that's, loose. That's always, that's always the case. Yeah. Yeah. And it's because we don't have regulation. We, no, it's not, it's not it's regulation. Not regulation it's there's no enforcement. Yeah. It's not, it's and not enforcement. and so the are, we going to, are we going to put money into enforcement? But there's no parking, there's no parking hours on Garden Street, is there? Yes, there is. Yeah. And there's, and there's, there's none on Church Street. There's probably parking hours on Church Street too. There's right. none, there's none on High Street. There. There's mm -hmm. none on High Street. High Street is a don't anybody touch High Street. Leave if on. we're gonna <laughs> put if we're gonna put signs yeah. on okay on, on those, let's put them on High Street. So that's okay. So that's one of the and I think on uh, whatever whatever street that is, you know. <laughs> this is oh, exactly so why nothing happens with parking. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I mean the parking thing is if if you wanted to put parking, one of the things is when you start it and end it because people are coming to go to work and they have six or seven parking. So they can they can pull in at eight o'clock, which is day. fine, and then then they then move it at twelve a little bit, and then they're good for the day. But well, if, that's if you do if you do I've come back from meters, the city to do that, that would they would be caught by that, not caught, but they would yeah. be they would be yeah. they would have to pay mm -hmm. the metered fee to park. You mean on meters on side streets? No, no I'm, I'm talking street. just Main Street. Yeah. Main, yeah, main, main, meters on Main. But and they, then they're parking just on park, side streets. Then people will just park on side streets. streets. Yeah, yeah. Right. And, and we're not we're it. not policing it now. Yeah, that, that's always an issue in this village. Are we going to police? No, the, the not no during the week. So on the side streets. Not yeah. during the week. You know, if we well, did, what if we just determined when we really need to? Yeah, the people who live it. on the side streets, Stone Street is like the one I always always comes to mind because they're very few. Uh, driveways there, um, commuters will park there, uh, and they'll stay there all day. You know, so if you don't want commuters to park, then you've got to say from eight to five or something like that, right. or nine to whatever it but is. Then you have or to just say no commuter then you have to parking. Enforce it. And right. people know that, you know, maybe once every six months I'm going to get a ticket, so screw it, it's, it's worth my while. And, and yeah. those people who live on Stone Street will get ticketed. Yeah, well that's... If, we, if you that's, enforce yeah. it, they Unless will get ticketed. Unless you have a permit. Yeah. Well, yes. the, if you have a permit, we have to come Sticker. up with the numbers that say we can do permits. Yeah. And we can get back to right, yeah. back to the square one. And then a lot of people that are living on the streets mm -hmm. don't want that permit. Because, yeah, and then and the they want to park who, their friends and their kids can park there right now all day if and they then want the to. The people who live over the stores on Main Street and Main Street's not a permit street will be will be stuck to where they're going to park. They won't have a permit. They won't be able to park any place in the village mm -hmm. because they don't have a permit. So that's all right. So so. It, in the process of whether or not we're going to do that, the other, the couple of other issues. One, one of them was there's, there's a couple of streets in the village who have no parking on one side that have like zero signs there. For example, Furnace Street, there's no parking on the east side, but there isn't a sign or on the west side, right? It's on the west side, no parking on the west. But there's no, 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 no parking on the east side on Furnace Street. Not a sign all the way down. I think on a Garden Street, there's no parking on one side of Garden. There's not a sign all the way down. So those, and then the other piece that I have discussed, I started with you, I talked to I would challenge some of them to be balls enough to park. Well, no, you know what, <laughs> people West who side. live here, people who live I here know, know that. Right. Why do we need to put up no parking? But no, because people who don't live here have, will drive in, find a space, and they will park. 
Not and if they, they get a ticket. Not on those streets, Fran. Not on the side. The, what, on the, if they what? park on those streets, they block the traffic on the entire yeah. street. But not going to happen. <clears throat> I know, but, if, you know, I, I, mean, I mean, if Larry can show that people have done it, then I'm, if, if they, I'm if open they to get a ticket, though, signs. then it, they're going to fight it in court. There's no sign there that okay. says. But has anybody ever they done don't that? Get they don't get rear-ended. But that doesn't. Okay. Now, what chapters are we reviewing before I... <laughs> 114 and 64. Wait, wait, 114, yeah. And then 64. And yeah, that's it? And then 71. 71, yeah. 76. 76. 93. 93. 97. 97. 104, 106. 114. 114 starts at the beginning. Okay, that's 104 and 106. Yeah. Okay. 104, 106, 64, 114. 72, 76. No, 71, 76. 71 and 76. 71 and 76. And 96. we get that information. 93 and 97. What was the first one? 114, 64. Okay, I can't read my own hand. Mm -hmm. All right. Make a motion to adjourn. Second that. Okay, so we're meeting Monday. It's...